So I've already talked about all sorts of ways that we can create custom components in .NET MAUI, but we haven't talked about lookless components, which are the most crazy, but also the most powerful. So recently I wanted to build a highly reusable accordion component that could be used across all sorts of different applications. So that being said, I didn't really want a specific UI attached to this component. Essentially, I just wanted a component that would capture the behavior of an accordion, and then each app could provide their own UI. There's actually tons of libraries already like this in the web development world. So like Radix UI is a good example of this. So what approach can we use to build this for a .NET MAUI application? We can't use something like a content view because that would imply that we're bringing our own UI. And we can't necessarily take an inheritance approach because there's not any existing .NET MAUI component that really fits under the umbrella of accordions. So instead we're gonna use something called a templated view which is gonna capture the behavior of our component and let the client bring its own UI. Okay, so right now I have essentially a blank .NET MAUI application. We're gonna be starting all the way from scratch here. So the first thing we have to do is create this templated view that's gonna represent our accordion behavior. So in our project, let's just throw this at the root. We're gonna create a new item here, just a class called accordion. And this class is gonna be a templated view. So we'll simply inherit from that. So again, the way this templated view works is it's gonna capture the behavior and we're gonna provide the UI. So let's actually use this accordion templated view and demonstrate how we provide the UI before we get into any of the behavior part of this. So in our project, let's add another item here. This will be a .NET MAUI content view in XAML and we'll call it something like my app accordion because we're gonna take our accordion templated view and style it in terms of our app. So let's bring in a reference, we'll just call it local, that references the namespace that contains our accordion templated view. And then let's replace all of this with our own accordion definition. So we're gonna reference our accordion templated view here and since this is a templated view, the way this works from the client side is we simply provide a control template. So this is where we're gonna specify our very own UI for our accordion. So in here, we're gonna define a control template. And then inside here, we'll keep it very simple for now. So we'll have a vertical stack layout with a button that just says toggle. So this button's what's gonna to toggle the accordion. And then we're also gonna have just a label in here that says hello world. So this will essentially be our accordion content that gets shown and hidden. And lastly, let's reference this component on our main page. So bring in our namespace and then reference my app accordion. There we go. So now if we boot this up, it's not pretty, but we can literally see the control template that we passed in being displayed. But obviously right now it doesn't do anything. So this is where we get into our templated view and we get into defining the behavior of our accordion. So in order to add behavior to our control template and the elements inside of here, we're gonna need references to these elements from inside of our templated view. So let's define fields for those. So we're gonna have a button for our trigger. So this is what toggles the accordion. And we're also gonna have a very generic visual element for the content that we're gonna show and hide. And we're doing visual element here because this is very low on the spectrum or hierarchy of MAUI components, which is what we want. Shouldn't matter if this is a label or maybe a vertical stack layout, etc. So now in order to actually get the elements in our control template into these fields, we can override a method called on apply template. And this method gets called whenever this template gets applied to our component. So that being said, inside of this method, we can query for certain elements inside of our control template. And to do that, simply got to use this fancy method get template child, which will grab an element off of our control template by a name. So that being said, we will have to give our button a name. So let's call it trigger. And let's also give our content a name because we'll be referencing that next. We'll call it content. So now let's simply reference that name here, trigger. And we'll do the same thing for querying our content. Okay, so at this point, we should have queried the elements in our control template. So now we can start adding behavior to them. So if we did successfully get our trigger, then perhaps we want to take that trigger and add a clicked handler to it. So let's define that, generate a method down here. And now we do have to do null checks and stuff here because there is a chance that there isn't an element in our template with that name. So whenever our trigger button is clicked, we basically want to toggle the visibility of our content. So first off, let's add a guard to make sure our content 
is not null. And then if we have our content element, we simply can invert the visibility of it. All right, let's see this in action. Okay, so we've hit one apply template. So we're gonna try and find these elements by name on our control template. Let's see how that goes. There we go, we found our trigger button and we found our content, great. Then we apply our clicked handler. So now if we click toggle here, here we go, we hit that click handler, we have our content and we invert the visibility of it. And there we go, our accordion is kind of working. Now keep in mind, this is essentially just a component. So we can leverage other mechanisms like bindable properties to add bindable state to our accordion component as well. So for example, maybe we'd want a bindable property for the is expanded state. So that'll just be a Boolean on our accordion. We'll default it to false. And this would allow us to perhaps set the initial is expanded state on our component or even set up a binding for the is expanded state. But for this example, at least, perhaps I want to set the initial is expanded state to false. So now, instead of inverting if our content is visible, we really just want to derive if the content's visible from our is expanded bindable property. So that being said, let's update our flow of data to make this possible. So first off, whenever we click our trigger, what we really want to do is toggle or in other words, invert our is expanded state. So we'll just invert it like so. And now back to our bindable property, what we can do is we can define a property changed callback that will listen and react to whenever this property changes. So we'll call it something like on is expanded changed. Let's generate that. And this callback is kind of loosely typed, but basically this bindable object that we get passed into this callback is gonna represent our accordion. So we can just do a type check on that. So if our bindable is an accordion, then perhaps we'll take that accordion instance and call some sort of sync is expanded method. And what this method is gonna do, let's just generate it real quick, throw it right here. It'll essentially sync the value of is expanded with whether or not our content is visible. So we'll set content is visible to if we're expanded. Uh, we need a null check here. All right, so if the content is null, we'll just return early and also we really only call sync is expanded whenever is expanded changed. So that being said, we do have to call sync is expanded when we initialize our accordion as well so that we can use the initial is expanded value to set the initial content visibility state. All right, so let's walk through this. So right now is expanded is defaulted to false. Well, let's run this. Okay, so we're applying our template. So we're gonna sync is expanded, which we have our content and we're gonna set our content visibility to our initial is expanded value, which again is false. There we go. So we're going to hide our content initially. Perfect. And we can see that. So now if we toggle our accordion, here we go. We're getting into this property changed callback here. Our bindable is indeed an accordion. And we're going to sync our expanded state again. This time, of course, is expanded is true. So we will be showing our content. There we go. So now all of our accordion behavior is encapsulated within this unstyled templated view, which means again, we can bring any style that we want as long as we provide a trigger button named trigger and some sort of element with our content. So let's make this a little bit prettier. So for our content, we'll have a vertical stack layout with some styles, same text inside. And for our button, we got the right name. We got some styles and we can even have data bindings here. So we can bind to that is expanded property on our templated view, as we can see here, and set certain properties based on that value. So now if we run this, it'll look a little bit better at least. Here we go, we can open, there we go, hooray, and close. Cool, looks good. Okay, so just to summarize, we've created our accordion templated view, which grabs the bare essential elements needed from our control template and adds the relevant behavior to our control template elements. And then in terms of using this templated view, we can create our very own wrapper content view component, which uses our templated view and provides our very own highly customizable control template. All we have to do is make sure that we have all the elements by name that our templated view references. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own .NET MAUI application or .NET MAUI component library in order to create highly reusable headless components that encapsulate component behavior and can be reused in any application.